Hi everyone, this is Sasha Knorr, I'm a composer. This is my second video for Sound Iron, and today I will walk you through my demo piece for the Mercury Boy Choir Library. It's called A Glimpse at the Stars, and right now we are looking at the project window in Cubase, where I have all my MIDI tracks. Um, for the sake of a better overview, I already did a mix down of my orchestral instruments and some additional percussion instruments uh, and loaded them as a single audio track, which you can see up here. So, uh, this will allow us to fully concentrate on the MIDI tracks for the choir and uh, some other instruments I would like to show you. Uh, as you can see, we have a single folder here, which includes all the choir tracks. I also have loaded the soloist patch, uh, which does a tiny solo in the middle of the piece. And below that we have a couple of other sound iron instruments, for example some patches from the Mars Male Choir, the Emotional Piano, um, some Circle Bass patches, and a bunch of other instruments from Sound Iron's catalog, which helped me to create those sparkling soundscapes you can hear throughout the piece. I will show you more of this later, but now let's get started with the choir parts. So let me scroll back to the beginning and open the MIDI tracks. So this might look a little bit complicated, but I will explain everything. Um, uh, for the sake of this video, I opened all controller lanes which contribute to the sound and expression of the piece. And they will stay open all the time so you can see everything that's going on. I have my notes up here, below and above them are the key switches, which in this case switch between the different vowels of the legato patch. In the controller lines we have the modulation, CC1, which is attached to the swell knob in the patch and so controls the dynamics. I also use CC7, the general main volume controller, for this. Below that we have CC11, which controls the legato speed. And then last but not least, a CC21, which is attached to the blending of the two layers. So let me show you this within the sampler. So I open contact. Here you can see the patch and we have vowel 1 and vowel 2, which are the two layers. And with the slider in the middle, I can blend between them. And to be able to control this, I have attached a MIDI controller. So now I can use the key switches in red for layer 1 and in green up there for layer 2 to choose my vowel. And then, as I said, use the controller to blend between them. Here we have the swell knob for layer 1 and 2, which I already attached to CC1. And up there in the legato window I have my speed controller also routed to here you can see the effect of CC7, which controls the main volume of the contact patches. So now back to the sequencer and let's have a listen to the choir in the beginning. Okay, we heard quite a few vowel changes in this part. The first one is back here where I blended from the M in layer 1, which is this key switch here, to the U in layer 2, which is defined by this key switch up there. And as I already explained, the controller to perform the crossfade. Uh, this can be done whenever I want, be it within a note or even within a legato transition, which is what I did here. And of course, if you don't need the crossfade between two vowels uh, within one note or an interval, you can also use the key switches only. 
Okay, so now let's listen to this first section together with the other instruments. So now the orchestral instruments come in. short intermezzo we have a new section and two new parts for the choir here they are split into two individual voices which are doubled also with the piano so let me play this for you so we have a drill on B and C which carries on through this whole phrase and then below that my theme starts playing. Now, the most interesting thing here, I believe, is this low melody sung by the choir section A, which consists of the legato patch and a phrase master patch. So let me show you this in detail. Okay, um, as I said, this is a combination of a legato patch and the phrase master patch. So let's take a look at this inside contact. Um, here is the legato patch you already know with my two layers. And then I have the phrase master. So here in the center of this patch you can see a long list of the available syllables. And you can click on them and so arrange them in a specific sequence, you can switch between staccato and mercato and uh, create some phrases with this. You also have the ability to control some parameters. I think I only attached my mod wheel to the swell control here. And then they are played one after another as you play your MIDI notes. You also have the ability to set up some key switches to control the sequence of the syllabus you already have chosen. I did this here to tell the patch where I am right now within my phrase. So when I play the first note stop and then uh, play it again, I will hear the next syllable because the phrase sequence are already proceeded to the next cell. So to avoid this, I created this lane of key switches manually, which will always select the right syllable for the right note. So, let me show you what's going on here in detail. In the Phrase Master patch, we have uh, some dynamics control, as we also have very loud and high notes. But at the same time, very quiet. So, you have a good amount of control over this. And then, to create this nice flowing melody line, I've decided to combine those syllabus from the phrase master patch with the legato patch we already discussed. So first the syllable is played. And then we fade in the legato. You can see with the CC7 control down here. And create the legato transition into the next note. I also changed the vowel or blended the vowel with CC21, the, the same procedure as in the first phrase. And finally, I've adjusted the legato tempo to my taste for this melody. This basically controls the duration of the legato transitions. So the higher it is, the faster the transition will be played. And now with this technique, I'm allowed to create some imaginary kind of text based on the syllabus available 
And at the same time, I don't have to give up on a very natural sounding legato. Okay, um, maybe I should just play the legato on its own so you can hear the transition and the crossfading between the vowels. So, and now if I add the syllabus back in, we have our melody. Then the second time it becomes more intense and also louder. For those last three notes I use the marcato syllables only to make them really accentuated and let them stand out of the rest of the instrumentation. Here I need the key switches above because if I play those syllables with some overlap between the notes you always hear the same syllable as the patch doesn't proceed to the next one. That's maybe because you can play some suspended chords or things like this and so you have to leave a certain space between the notes to really proceed through the sequence. But uh, with the key switches you can walk around this issue by simply manually selecting the next syllable to be played and then you can still have your overlapping notes. So now let me also show you the male choir part we have here. Okay, so let me maybe switch back to the boy choir and let's have a listen. The male choir also sings some syllables from its uh, phrase selector patch. Um, it's basically there to support the sound of the orchestra and of course also the boy choir and it's really in background. I also only use the far mics of the Mars male choir. So now let's take a look at this last section you just heard. There are basically two things going on. So first we have this part which is basically done with the same technique as the melody before by using the legato patch and the phrase master patch. Here I have a phrase syllable for every note and the legato patch is just there to add some transitions between them. So uh, to show you this, let me first play only the syllables. Doesn't sound that bad, but when I add the legato, the notes appear much more connected and we get a much more flowing melody line. Now, you certainly already heard the second voice that the choir is singing here in this section, so let's jump into this. 
Here I have a simple legato line which just underpins the harmony of this section. So as you can see down in the controller lanes, I mainly used the modulation to control my dynamics here, so no CC7 action in this case. Um, a general thought about phrases like this, especially with singers and of course also with wind instrument players, you should pay attention to the length of your phrases and leave some breaks to allow them to breathe. Even though we work with samples here and are generally not bound to natural limitations. Another thing I would like to mention here is the legato speed. In my first video, which was a walkthrough of one of my Venus demos, I used a very slow legato speed for quite fast lines. In this case, um, it doesn't really work as I will show you right now when I pull it down. Sounds quite nice generally, but in this case I really wanted a more accentuated and rhythmic legato line and therefore those really slow transitions stand a bit in the way. So uh, let me pull this up again. Oh, let me show you how it sounds if I do a very fast legato. Okay, that is a bit mechanical for this kind of phrase, so let us pull it back to about 76. Okay, that's fine for me. So now let me play you this line together with the orchestra, where we have cellos doubling this melody. And by the way, what comes to my mind right now, uh, I have still not explained um, how I organized the different sections here. You can see I have boy choir, legato, A, B and C, and also phrase master A and B. And those are basically the same patches, so you don't have separate sections in Mercury, but I created them virtually and also panned them a little bit across the stereo field. And secondly, the sound of the choir you hear in this video is basically absolutely unprocessed, except for a bit of external reverb, so let me turn this off and play you something dry. So we have some kind of room sound baked in the samples, but it's still small enough to be very controllable and very flexible. So now let me turn on the reverb again and let's take a look at the next section. So in this section I use the whisper patch, which comes with Mercury. Let me show you this. Um, I may also look into contact. So here it is. It's basically the same structure as with most of the Mercury patches. We have two layers. I have deactivated layer 2 here because I don't need it. And in chant 1 or layer 1, I've just selected the all option. You can also select the single whisper syllables or vowels and then play them transposed on the keyboard. But in this case I just selected all and so they are spread uh, over the keys and I can play them directly without any key switches and such. So let me play this for you.
So um, those whispers are just there to create a nice atmosphere, which is also supported by some other instruments, basically the same instrumentation as in the beginning. So let me play this together with the whispers. Okay, now the second element of this section is a little solo sung by one of the Mercury soloists. So here's the MIDI. Uh, in this case I only have modulation and expression going on, modulation for the dynamics and expression for the legato speed. This is the patch in contact. Again, the same structure. We have two layers. In this case I also deactivated the second layer because I only wanted the soprano. And we have this R-Val here. I also only use the close mics in this case. And here you can see the attached controllers. Speed and swell. In this phrase you can also see and hear that I need quite long note offsets from time to time to give the legato transitions uh, enough space and still keep the overall timing. So when I play this to you, maybe together with the piano, you can hear this quite well. Okay, now let's turn on the other instruments and listen to this whole section again. Now we have a nice little intermezzo by the strings. And then we dive into the final little theme. First played by piano and some orchestra instruments. And then with the choir and the winds. Um, one little thing you might wondering about, there are some very low um, bass notes throughout the piece. You might hear them only on headphones or a good 4-inch system or if you have a bass extension. Those are from the Tuned Artillery Library, also by Sound Iron, and they simply help my orchestra bass instruments. I think I use contrabassoon and string basses here uh, for this full-bodied sound. So this is the choir part. Um, this time only legato, no phrases, no extra stuff. Uh, it's just a simple legato patch again with some uh, vowel transitions. I think this is only the U to the R sound here in this case. So now maybe let's take a look at the lead voice in this part. Also in this case I had to tweak the note offset to keep the timing. So if I switch on the metronome, you can hear this. Ah, here's something I can tweak a bit more. Ah, much better. Um, in this last phrase, I didn't offset the notes too much because there I like this quite uh, laid back tempo. Um, let me show you the third voice.
And here you can also hear how nice it sounds if you fade one vowel into another even on one note. So now... And the strings lead us to our new subdominant, which is sung by the men choir and supported by the brass. Um, maybe I show you this also. This is uh, a legato patch with two voices and a sustain patch below. This is very much laid back. Um, again, I used only the far microphones here for the male choir and in the mix I also reduced the low mid frequency content of the choir. And then we have our epilogue. Here we have the choir, the piano, some atmospheric metallic sounds and also very, very quiet and soft uh, flageolet tremolo from the strings. So maybe let's take a look at the choir first. This is again simple legato and oo with some modulations on the legato tempo. So this goes on and on until the end. And then the last chord has a soft fade out in CC7. Yeah, then we have the piano, which is keeping the rhythm and the basic flow of the piece in this last part. Then I filled this with some string flageolets. Very quiet. And finally, some metallic sounds from, I believe, Symbology and the Water Phone. So, some really nice crystalline sounds to enhance the whole mood of the piece. Yeah, this has a rather slow attack. Let me play this. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. It was a big pleasure talking to you. So best wishes and greetings to wherever you are, bye bye and have fun!